All right, what's up, everyone? It is that time of the month again. Wait a minute, let me rephrase that. It is that week again where we get a spark. We're getting our third spark for this patch, patch 10.2. You're probably wondering what you should spend it on. So I'm going to walk you through my process on how I'm going to decide what I'm going to spend mine on, and hopefully that will help you. So let me start by just giving you sort of a history of what I spent my things on and probably what you did past couple weeks um, if you've been following my advice. So first and foremost, because I am a raider, I do mythic rating, I would say even if you're doing like heroic rating or even normal rating, um, you probably want to consider getting the toxic thorn foot wraps. A pair of boots with a proc on it, the damage number and the healing on it scales with the item level of the item that it's on, so you boost that proc, does really well. Um, secondly, for your second embellishment, you want to have the toxified armor patch. You can put that on any piece of leather crafted gear. Um, so for me, I chose to put it on my belt. So that is where I spent my sparks. I spent one um, to craft the boots and then the second one to rank up the lifebound belt with the toxified armor patch. Now that we have our third spark, there's a couple different things that we can do because we already have our two embellishments. We now have some freedom to craft kind of just whatever piece is going to be the biggest upgrade for us. Again, I want to reiterate from my last video and the one before that, you do not want to craft a weapon because our best in slot weapons are coming from Dawn of the Infinites and from the raid. If you craft a weapon, you're just going to end up replacing it whenever you get double time or the um, fist weapon from the raid. The reason you used to craft a weapon is because crafting and professions used to give items that were of the highest eye level. And that is different this time around. They're actually three item levels lower. So crafting a weapon is not something you should do. So don't craft a weapon. You also don't want to craft any type of trinket because all of the crafted trinkets just aren't good for us or anyone really. So you're left with um, a cloak, a neck, maybe a ring. It all depends on like where you put your toxified armor patch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run some sims and we're going to see what will be the best upgrade for me. So the first thing I did is I ran a drop demiser. So if you guys aren't familiar on how to do this, you can go to raid bots, insert your simulation craft code into there and run Droptimizer and you can select professions, set it to max upgrades. So this is going to tell you what all of these profession items are going to sim for you. So we can see here that a ring is going to be a 2,793 DPS increase and this was a single target sim. So that's, that's not bad. That's a hefty bit of damage for single target. Now I also did the same sim in AOE. And again, it is slightly higher as you would imagine with a higher target count. So that's a common denominator. We see that the ring is an upgrade in single target and in AOE. So that's a good sign so far. So the next thing I did was I ran Droptimizer for Mythic Plus and I just did it at a plus 20, meaning the item is gonna be 470 eye level, just to see if there's anything um, that would be a larger upgrade than something that I could potentially craft. Meaning if I can get that upgrade from something farmable, it's gonna be better for me in the long run to just do that than to waste a spark to craft something in that slot. You can see that there's not really anything that's standing out. The one thing that I do really need to farm on this character is the Band of Twisted Bark from Darkheart Thicket. This is only going to replace one of my rings, meaning I'll still have another one um, where I can craft something that will be probably a, a pretty large upgrade. Now that we have that all taken care of, what I did was I went ahead and simmed each individual thing through gear compare. So what I did was I simmed things that I could craft so we have the ring, right? I'd be crafting that from scratch and I'd be using crests to upgrade it. Um, we have the belt that I'm currently wearing. I've already used a spark on that. So it's like 476 or something, but I do need to bring it up to 480, 486. So that would only require a recraft with an aspect, uh, an enchanted aspect crest. And then I simmed what each of my pieces that could still be upgraded um, would be in terms of DPS increase. And of course this is just a single target sim so it's telling me that you know a second double time at 483 is going to be a downgrade but we don't really need to worry about that because we know two double times is best in slot for aoe this is where we're at baseline where it says jedith that's 206,710 damage if i were to just craft a ring we're going to craft the signet of titanic insight get it all the way up to 46 um, and when you craft a ring it comes with a free socket on that item so that alone is big value because a, a socket is worth a couple i would say probably like 10 to 15 eye levels on its own just having a socket on that the reason we didn't craft a ring earlier in, in the patch is because rings don't have primary stat on them so you want to be getting all your primary stat as quickly as you can from other pieces first. Rings only have stamina 
and they only have secondary stats. This is why we've waited this long to get the ring because it doesn't have primary stat. But we've got the bigger upgrades first. We got the boots and the, the patch and everything else. And now we're able to get the ring for a increase of around 2.5k single target. And you can see it varies a little bit depending on which slot I put the ring in, whether it's in the first slot or, or the second slot. So this tells me that crafting the ring should be my first priority because that's going to be the biggest uh, DPS increase. Now second on the list would be upgrading my crafted belt up to 486. This is going to be a, another 2k increase, but it's going to be a recraft, meaning I'm going to have to use a enchanted aspect uh, dreaming crest to upgrade it. So we know that to get that Enchanted Crest, that's going to cost us around 30, no, 60, it's 60, 60 Aspect Crests. It's going to be going to um, upgrading this belt. So I'm going to craft the ring, but I'm also going to upgrade the belt. And then from there, the next biggest upgrades are going to be spending Crests to upgrade my cloak. Um, I just got this recently, actually, pretty excited to get this. Um, and then the headpiece, which is the Hood of Perpetual Conflict, uh, which is Crit Haste. This came from Mythic Plus, and I'm not using the tier headpiece. I got um, mythic level shoulders in my vault and they have a lot of agility on them because they're so high eye level they're 489 so i'm using these at the moment to get my four piece and then i'm putting a, a mythic plus headpiece in that slot so i would upgrade my head then next in line would be wrists the thermal bindings that i have and then i would upgrade my tier gloves and then the neck that i have the chain of the green flight so that's kind of like the order of operations that i'm going to be working from starting today or tomorrow, depending on when you're watching this video. The one thing to consider though is what am I going to get in my vault? Because that could play a large part into um, how I do this, right? Like I could get something that could throw all of this off. I think I'm going to be pretty safe though. I think for the most part, nothing can really change any of this. Even if I get like a high eye level, um, like a 489 or whatever band of Twisted Bark, that would be an amazing upgrade. I would take it, I would wear it. Then I do still have another ring slot available where I would craft um, this Signet of Titanic Insight. It would be great, because then we have two really juicy rings. The other options would be just replacing any of these items that I've got from Mythic Plus with replacements of the same item from the vault with just a higher upgrade track, with the Myth track, because that saves me crests, and I can use those crests that I'm saving to upgrade other things. So yeah, I'm going to be making a ring. Now, do make sure, if you plan on putting any type of embellishment on this, make sure that you craft the signet of titanic insight do not craft the ring bound hourglass the reason you don't want to craft this one is because it comes with an effect on it it's the it's kind of like a hearth effect this is it a place you may have long since forgotten it's a 20 hour cooldown you cannot put an embellishment on this so if you plan on putting anything on it like maybe a blue silken lining or if you're putting flavor pocket on it which i am definitely going to be doing this week i don't know how i've been living without a flavor pocket um, i cannot wait to get that back so i'll be putting a flavor pocket on the ring you cannot put that on the ring bound hourglass it has to be a signet of titanic insight so just keep that in mind when you're getting a ring crafted make sure you ask for this one specifically even though they have the same stats they're exactly the same just this one has a, a, a proc effect on it or an on use effect and that means you cannot put anything else on it so make sure you get the signet of titanic insight now aside from that there are a few things that you need to know when you log into your havoc demon hunter this week um, there have been some tuning adjustments balancing nerfs if you will um, some things got adjusted, so Fel Barrage took a pretty hefty hit at 12% um, decrease in damage. You won't be running Fel Barrage anymore in Mythic Plus. You will be running the same build. It's called the Ignition Mythic Plus build. You can find it either in my Discord or on Wowhead or whatever. But instead of taking Fel Barrage as your capstone, you're just going to be switching that from Fel Barrage over to Essence Break. So if you've played Havoc Demon Hunter in the previous um, seasons, this expansion, you should know how to play Essence Break. If you don't know how to play Essence Break, I'll put a link to a guide video that I made up in the top right corner. You can go check it out. I have also updated the cheat sheet for that build in my Discord. So if you want the cheat sheet with the import code, the rotation, how to play it, what to prioritize, what buttons to press, um, all that fun stuff, you can go to my Discord and download that cheat sheet for free. So again, link to the Discord will be in the description of this video. Go check it out. And I hope you guys have a wonderful week in Raid and in Mythic Plus. All right, catch you next time. Peace.